Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and welcome to this first of a new series of Red Game Nintendo.com videos. It's a little bit different, but hopefully you'll like it. In this particular video, we're going to be discussing Microsoft's Direct X 12. Since it's all the rage these days, we're going to be discussing the potential performance benefits, the future and the impact it will have for both the PC and of course Microsoft's own Xbox One. So without further ado, let's get on with it, shall we? So firstly, what is it? Well, DirectX 12 is a low-level API and very different from the highly abstracted DirectX 11 which was introduced into the PC market space back in 2009. Essentially, it allows developers to increase both performance and control they have of system resources. For example, your PC's graphics card and of course the processor. This additional control and performance means that developers can use the system in a much more console-like manner. And this means, in turn, developers will be able to push forward towards next generation graphical effects and develop for next generation game engines. For each frame of animation on screen, the GPU has to draw each and every object that is displayed. The CPU has to tell it how to do this. So, for example, the color of an object, the size, the position of the geometry, and so on and so forth. This leads to a lot of work done by both the GPU and the CPU. The game, the application you could call it, tells DirectX 11 what it wants done. From there, DirectX 11 will then communicate with the GPU and tell it how to do this. The purpose behind this high level of abstraction was so that the developers could create games for a wide variety of hardware without too much problems. However, this high level of abstraction in turn produces some problems with high levels of CPU overhead. These problems are compounded because DirectX 11 was not built with multi-threading in mind. Take an average PC gamer who's running an Intel i5-2500K, which has four CPU cores available. With DirectX 11, most of the work will be done on a single CPU core, which will not only be running the draw calls, which we'll be discussing in just a moment, but also much of the work on the driver, which has, as we just mentioned, a high level of overhead. This means that the one CPU core, let's call it core zero, will have a high degree of usage, let's say 100%, while the other three cores are doing very little work, which isn't very ideal for system performance. In short, DirectX 11 thinks in a, and acts in a serial manner. It simply cannot think and issue instructions from across all CPU cores at once. So what does this mean? Well, unfortunately, CPUs are no longer progressing how they were back in the late 90s and early 2000s. You may recall back then that not only were we getting large boosts in CPU speed, but also the raw performance per clock was also accelerating much greater than what it is currently. Another reason this is important is because recently GPU performance has leaping way above what CPUs are currently capable of. Intel, Nvidia, AMD, and various other companies have all noted this. Therefore, manufacturers must think parallel themselves. In other words, they have to add increasing the numbers of CPU cores to their processors. Obviously, this is a problem if, quite simply put, for your game, you can only actually issue commands through one CPU core. This has long been a benefit to consoles, where despite the fact that the consoles have considerably weaker hardware than the PC, for example, their CPU or their GPU, because of their low-level nature, their able developers rather are able to get much more out of the hardware than what they could for the PC. Think of it this way. Currently, using DirectX 11, many games struggle to go beyond, say, 10, 20,000 draw calls. Whereas on the other hand, with DirectX 12, Vulkan, or even Mantle, developers are able to increase this by an order of magnitudes. This is incredibly important when you consider that a draw call, in its essential function, is the CPU telling the GPU, remember, what it has to draw on screen. This leads to the fact that of course you can have high resolution textures on the PC, but you can't necessarily ramp up the number of objects or unique details on screen. So what are the potential benefits and performance benefits of DirectX 12 over DirectX 11? Well, while we're unfortunately still waiting, of course, for DirectX 12 to be unveiled, unless you're watching this at some distant point in the far future, the good news is developers do have the X12 games penciled in for the later part of this year, which of course coincides with the release of, Direct of Windows 10. The other benefit is we do, of course, already have GDC presentations and 3D marks. Uh, API overhead tests which show the potential performance we can be getting from the next generation of games. Back in GDC 2015, Microsoft, along with many of its partners, were showcasing DirectX 12. 
During the presentation, Kasper Engelsoft, hopefully I'm pronouncing the fellow's name correctly, showed the potential performance benefits with Unity, during which he showed DirectX 11 rendering shadows in a scene. Using this test, the, it took 23 milliseconds to render these shadows. Switching, however, to the exact same scene, the only difference being utilizing DirectX 12 dropped the test to only 13 milliseconds, which, as I'm sure you'll agree, is an absolute massive saving. Citing our own performance results with the 3 d Mark overhead API test, we noticed a staggering 17 times boost in performance over DirectX 11, which, as I'm sure you'll agree, is frankly staggering. Now, of course, this will result and differ depending on your setup, but it does give you a glimpse into the future. We can also look at the current low-level API that's out there, AMD's Mantle, and its results in various games, for example, Thief, where there is a large performance difference between it and DirectX 11. Of course, it does once again depend on your setup. So, what about the future? Despite the fact that we've spent the last few minutes droning on about multi-threading, it's certainly not the only thing that Microsoft's new API has up its sleeves. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, we can't discuss all of them, but we certainly are going to be discussing a few of the more important benefits. If you do want some more information, we do have multiple videos and articles up on the website on this, and we'll include a few links in this video. A rather new exciting feature of DirectX 12 is Execute Indirect. This feature was uh, previewed at GDC 2015 by Max McCullen. Typically, the GCP, also known as the Graphics Command Processor of the GPU, can be actually overwhelmed by the sheer number of draw calls issued by the CPU if DirectX 12 is used. Now, Execute Indirect bypasses this by the GPU being able to issue its own commands, which it can't typically do with traditional APIs, for example, DirectX 11. This means that for loops, compute functions, and other very routine types of functions, the GPU can cut out the middleman. This, in turn, not only reduces CPU uh, utilization, but also other components, for example, system memory, uh, PCIe bandwidth, and other components usage as well. Other features include much better memory management, advanced compute functionality, and as many of you know, compute, of course, is becoming a rather major thing, and much better resource management overall. This does mean that developers have to do a lot more work when managing resources, which can lead to some complications, but for games which aren't too complicated, they can still use the DirectX 11 standard methodologies. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this first of a new series of videos. We're still getting things down, including the format, and also, to be honest with you, my confidence of actually presenting the bloody thing. However, I'm rather confident of the new direction that RGT is going to be taking. We're going to be certainly adding a lot more of these type of uh, videos and content in the near future and making various other changes. And we deeply thank each and every one of you for every one of the views, uh, whether you're an old subscriber or whether you're just joining us. So with that said, take care and have an excellent day. Bye for now.